Well, hey everyone. A while back, I posted a video where I was sharing the technique that I use to insulate my cabin floors. And then I did a follow-up on that because there was a lot of questions that came in that I didn't cover in part one, so I did a part two. Since I posted that video, I've gotten a lot of comments from people, lots of great feedback from folks that have used it in the applica application that I suggested and had fabulous results. Okay? Of course, I get handfuls of negative comments from people that shoot it down because they are assessing it entirely on its R value. Okay? The R value is very, very low. But the reflective properties of this used in the manner that I do, it works fantastic. It is the best insulation I have ever used for a cabin floor. When I posted the first video, it was titled, How to Insulate a Cabin Floor and Keep It Rodent Free. It wasn't on how to insulate a cabin roof or cabin walls or anything else. I use it in the cabin floors because it doesn't gather moisture. The rodents don't mess with it. The ants don't mess with it. And it works fantastic. It keeps my, keeps my floors warm. <laughs> it's easy to install. It's not very expensive. It's just fantastic. All right. Before I go any further, however, I want to say again that I don't care what you use. I share this technique because it works so well and it's going to help people. I have never had a single, single conversation or any correspondence with the bubble foil companies. I don't get paid to sell bubble foil. I don't sell bubble foil. I don't care if you ever buy bubble foil. I don't care what you use. So it makes no difference to me whether you use this product or not. But for those that are having troubles with rodents ruining your insulation, then this video is for you. Alright? Alright. Well, the bubble foil haters keep coming at me. I'm always getting comments bashing the bubble foil, <laughs> saying it doesn't work, all of that stuff. So I just want to show you once again <laughs> to prove my point. All right. It's about two degrees right now. The temps come up a little bit because the sun's hitting that. But it was right on zero earlier. And the wind is pretty nasty. The wind chill factor this morning is 8 below 0 Fahrenheit. All right? And I wanted to go under the camp here and get some apples. So I'm going to take you along with me to show you. Now, I've showed this plenty of times in my videos, and I'm going to show you again because it still amazes me, all right? This is simply amazing, all right? So, I'm going to brush the snow away. The ground is frozen hard as a rock, right here, okay? Frozen hard as a rock. All I have for skirting is this was framed with pressure-treated 2x4s. I just have a waterproof skirting out here. It's less than a quarter inch thick. On the inside of the framework, I have one layer of bubble foil. And there's nothing in between it because mice are just going to get in there and make nest out of it. So it would be a waste of money. All right? All right. The only reason why this piece here is just so when I go in here and I kneel down, I'm not kneeling in the dirt. But I want to show you. All right, right here, frozen hot as a rock. Right here, look, 
I got a piece of something right here. I'm going to show you. There's no frost in the ground at all. Okay? I got my bucket of sand right here for when it's icy outside. Look at that. All right? Look at this right here. I got a bag of spring water. I always keep spring water and stuff like that under the camp in the summer because it stays nice and cold. Not as cold as a refrigerator, but you know, you have people over, I'm working outside, I don't got to run in and grab one out of the ice box. I come out and I grab one. These have been left in here since the summer. You can see how muddy it is. Not frozen, all right? Right here on the ground. All right, so I'll show you something else. Okay, I want to get some apples. Nice and crisp, okay? I was hoping I had a summer squash under here, but I don't. All right, so we have, we have beer, not frozen. I got all these oranges and uh, grapefruits. Okay. These were sent to me from a subscriber last week from Florida. Nice fresh treat for us up here on the mountain. I would not be storing them under here if, if I thought they were going to get frozen and ruined. Now whenever I show this, this comparison from the outside world to the underworld, I get people that say there's no way it's that bubble foil works that good. You must be running a heater under there before you film, and stuff like that. Totally ridiculous, okay? Why would I do that? I don't sell bubble foil, all right? I just, I'm just sharing uh, <laughs> what the success I've had with it, okay? So as you can see, underneath the camp here, the insulation is in the same condition as it was when we put it up in 2017, okay? Here is the skirting against the back wall, and this is on the inside of the framework. And like I said, there's only three and a half inch airspace because it's a two by four that this is framed with. So there's nothing behind this but air. But yet I have a trap full of water right here. Okay, and that's not frozen. And none of my plumbing under here has any issues whatsoever. If I had insulated this floor really, really tight, like everybody tells me to, then everything under here would freeze. But because of the way that this is done, just enough heat kind of transfers down through this wood. And then it gets under here and it's trapped under here because of that one layer of bubble foil in my skirting. So just enough heat comes down through the floor to warm under here. But if the bubble foil didn't work, that people said, then it wouldn't be trapped under here. It would cool off under here and freeze if I had no bubble foil in the skirting. See what I'm saying? The proof is in the pudding, all right? Yeah. Here's what it is. I want to show you one more thing, though, all right? I'm going to head out. I got my apples, and I'm going. I can't really film in here and shut the door, but this is just three-quarter inch plywood right here, and it's got one layer of bubble foil stapled to the back of it. I have it up over it so it seals when I close the door. But that is it on the door here. I skirted this little shed last summer but I never got to do the back side, all right? When I built the shed, I put one layer of bubble foil over the joist and put the three-quarter inch plywood on top of it, all right? This is the little shed where we keep our freezer, okay? Now, I'm gonna take the camera and I wanna show you something. See, there's no skirting over here. And if you look under there, you see the bubble foil between the floor joists. See that? It's just the way it was when I put it up. 
Perfect shape. Okay, I have my freezer in here. It's a gas freezer and it's in this shed and I insulated this shed because I wanted to trap the heat that the freezer creates because I want to store stuff in here that I don't want frozen. Right here on the floor jugs of water. Okay? Jugs of water. The only thing separating those jugs of water to the zero degree temps that are outside is one layer of three quarter inch plywood and one layer of bubble foil beneath that. That is it. I just showed you over here there's no skirting. There's no skirting under here, over here. But those are sitting on the floor, right there. All right? Without that bubble foil on the floor, I guarantee you they would be frozen. Okay? So just this little bit of heat that the freezer emits is warming this building just enough, and that bubble foil is reflecting the heat back into the building. I don't know what more proof anybody needs. I don't know. Okay, before I wrap up this video, I just want to address some of the questions that I have one last time, because the same questions come in almost daily. And the number one question is people ask, if can you use this in the walls and in the roof? Well, you certainly can but you will have much better results by using a fiberglass insulation. All of the structures that I build that I'm going to heat, I put fiberglass insulation in the walls and in the roof. Occasionally, I will use a mineral wool or rock wool insulation, and that'll be places where, like behind the wood stove or near the chimney where it goes through the roof. And I do so because it's a fireproof insulation, all right? The video that I made was how to insulate a cabin floor, and the reason why I titled it that is because most cabins are built in the woods. Most of them are built on piers. So, if you have any kind of an enclosure in the woods, rodents are going to flock to it, okay? Even if the enclosure is nothing more than a tarp draped over a lawnmower. Rodents are going to want to get in there and nest. So if you have a cabin up on piers, rodents are going to want to get under it and nest under there. And fiberglass insulation will be nothing but a waste of money and a nightmare for you. Okay, one last thing. Most of the comments that come in that bash the bubble foil, they do so because of the R value. And then they suggest that I use spray foam or uh, foam board insulation. I have used foam board insulation before and had nothing but problems with ants destroying it. And I'm not alone with that. A comment came in a while back here. I'm going to look. It says, I only used it once. Uh, foil backed rigid foam insulation in my cabin up north. The ants got into it and tunneled through it completely, a very expensive mistake, and that is the same results that I have had from it. If you tell somebody you're going to use bubble foil, most people will try to talk you out of it and tell you things like this guy. What's that? R0.001? It's not insulation, just a pretty crappy radiant barrier. Another one that can't think outside the box is Rufus Chuckle Buddy. Like as if that's his real name. He says, bubble foil isn't insulation. It has no insulation value. It's one of the biggest cons in the construction industry. Don't fall for it. Carl says, before anyone gets too excited about this insulation, do some research. It's about an R3, better than nothing, about as good as a flat 2x4, etc., etc., etc. Or you can just use the bubble foil, which is easy to find, easy to install, and go from 
the research that I have already done using the product. Okay, so all of the links to the other videos that I have made about this and to the products so you can see the specs for yourself and down below in the description. So, best of luck to you with your projects. All the best and God bless. Frank and the boss out walking in the woods Living life happy and free Tracks in the snow everywhere they go There's a pokey way up in that tree A beaver built a pond where they have some fun Taking life a day at a time Best friends until the end Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss